okay right let us start let us start with test ng today and look the thing is first of all in order to work with test ng you need eclipse luna i am also using eclipse luna don't use eclipse oxygen which is the latest version it will not support eclipse uh, sorry test ng as of today which is uh, december 2017 maybe in future it does that right and what you need to do is you need to first understand why we need to use test ng okay right look the thing is in simple words as i've explained you earlier as well right when you work on a project when you build a framework okay you have got different test cases these are your test cases right a test case one test case two okay all these are your test cases now when you have to run these test cases you have to run them in batch one after another or sometimes you might have to run them parallelly as well or sometimes you don't want to run one of the test cases you want to run one skip the other one and run the other one the third one right apart from this you would also want when the test cases are executed some reports are generated okay reports like extent reports okay the reports should be having a uh, screenshots in them along with it you should be having logs in the reports logs means that what happened when the test cases were being executed okay uh, for example i'll i'll show you a sample report okay hold on this is a sample report right it's suppose this was the test case it is starting the test executing the test and opening the browser navigating to url clicking on the link so each and every step is mentioned for this simple login test and if something is failing you have the screenshot as well okay these are extent reports you get the graphical format and all of the reports and all everything inside it right now you should be having proper reporting with screenshots and logs along with it you should be able to read the data from an external file we saw in the last class how to read the data from excel file or a properties file we have to read the data from an external source okay moreover when we build the framework you have to integrate it with jenkins or you have to integrate it with grid all right and you have you have to use the maven or the ant to build and run the project and all right so to do each and every step to work on this we use a centralized controller we use a centralized controller known as test ng which we are going to study today people also use j unit or bdd cucumber just one minute guys okay right people also use j unit bdd cucumber for this okay look there are various solutions in the market test ng is one of them and test ng is the best okay if you talk about just one minute guys i'm sorry so out here this blue box this blue box is selenium selenium will only have the commands to interact with the browser and that's what we saw in the in the training okay selenium will till now whatever we have learned in this training about selenium all these 13 days we saw that selenium has commands to interact with the browser selenium cannot help you build test cases or generate reports or read write from excel file you have to write the java code for that and similarly you have to integrate selenium with test ng to do all these things okay test ng will uh, help you read the data from the excel file 
run the test cases in a certain order or parallel order or skip the test cases as well or to generate the reports along with the screenshots and integrate it with grid maven and jenkins fine so it's like a centralized controller so it's quite easy it's not a difficult thing okay now to work with the test ng you have to install it okay you have to install testng as a plugin inside eclipse all right just go to google and type testng eclipse and testng will be added as a plugin if you go to the first link and you will have this follow the instructions to install the plugin you click over here and you see this install from update site right you have to copy this link i will give you the link on the chat as well go to eclipse go to help install new software okay and paste this url over here hit the enter button and out here you are you are seeing pending because testng is already installed in my machine in your machine testng will come up you click on the check box click on next 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 and your eclipse will restart and testng will be installed you can check whether it is installed successfully or not from windows show view go to other and under java you will see testng is present if you see that testng is present under java that means testng has been installed as a plugin inside eclipse okay right now you make a new project call it day 14 test ng okay you expand it and build a new package known as test case package is like a folder inside the folder okay inside the source folder i made a test cases package all right and suppose i make a simple test case i write over here book ticket okay right or like shop or mobile test okay right so this is the test case in which maybe we can go to a website and we can shop for a mobile now in test ng first of all there is no main function there is no main function there are annotations in test ng like you have the annotation at the rate test public void for example search mobile so this at the rate test is known as a annotation this at the rate test means that this function is a test case there is no main function you move the mouse over this error you will see the option add test ng library to the project okay if test ng is installed as a plugin you will see the option don't add the j unit add test ng library and again move the mouse over the error and import the test annotation okay right import the test annotation and now you can write over here this is 
system dot out dot print ln searching for mobile okay now you can right click on this and run as testng test okay you can run this test case as a testng test and when you run this in the console you will see that total test runs are 1 failures are 0 skips are 0 okay there will be a tab over here results of running the class if you click on this you will get some <coughs> pictorial representation of the results that is this test case has passed ok right and if you refresh the project you will have this test output folder in which default html reports are generated for testing ok you right click on this index.html go to properties and copy this index.html and you open this index.html you will have this small report okay in which you will have the past methods everything right but the, this is not a very effective report okay it is not at all an effective report we'll see how to generate better reports as well Okay, so this comes up by default in test engine. Similarly, we can have other test annotations like at the rate test, public void, select or say add to cart. You first search for the mobile and then in the next test case, you can add it to cart. You can make multiple test cases in a single Java file. Okay. You can print over here adding to cart. And then you can have add the rate test. Public void. Check out. Okay. Right. So you will have three test annotation functions. Search mobile, add to cart and check out. And when you run this, you will have the message over here, total test cases are 1, failures are 0, skips are 0. Okay. And in results, hold on, it's not coming up. Let me run it again. Sometimes it happens. It behaves weirdly. Hold on. Yeah, now it is coming. Sometimes if this happens, very rarely it happens. We are quite like it happened in the class. It, it doesn't detect two test cases. Now it's detecting all the three total test runs are three. If you look at the results of running the test, then all the three test cases have been executed. But the problem is add to cart is executed first, then check out and then search mobile. If you look at the console output, you will see that add to cart is executed first then check out and then searching for mobile now this is something which is disturbing because i wanted the execution order to be from top to bottom first search mobile then add to cart and then check out don't think that testng will execute the test cases top to bottom it's got its own order of executing okay you can prioritize your test cases you can write over here in the bracket that priority equals to 1 that means this should be executed first then priority equals to 2 priority equals to 3 you have to prioritize your test cases ok right now when I run this 
in the console output i will see that it gives an output like this searching for mobile adding to cart and checkout okay <clears throat> right so this is how it executes in the results of running the class as well you will see that right now you can do validations in test ng as well okay i'll just create a new class known as validations you can do the validations in test ng right and for example i can have the test at the rate test public void say register or whatever is the test case now in testing you, you move the mouse over this import the test annotation right now in testing what do you have generally you have expected result and you have the actual result actual result you will like get from selenium for example the title of the page if you want driver dot get title will give you title of the web page okay and expected result can be written in a excel file okay expected result can be written in a excel file and actual result can be from a drive dot you can in the, in the excel file you can give the title of the page or in the properties file you can keep your expected result now in testing you have to compare the expected result with the actual result okay hold on krishna i will come over to it your question I, i'll answer that just hold on as we proceed with the course you'll come to know okay so you have got assert class for this. assert is an inbuilt class you move the mouse over it and import assert from org.testng don't import assert from junit import it from testng and you write assert dot assert equals make sure your assert class is imported from testng sometimes people by mistake they import it from junit okay now you have to compare the actual and the expected result over here suppose actual result is say some city name london okay and the expected result is also some city name london both of them are equals so when you run this assert dot assert equals will pass the test case but if i write london 1 and london 2 over here both of them are different and if i run this you will get a failure okay right and in the reason it will say that expected was this actual was this out here in the console you will see that a test case is failed now the thing about assertion is that 
if I print over here A and if I print over here B then if I run this test case when the assertion fails only A will be printed B will not be printed the program stops if the assertion fails what if we have to print B sometimes you know you just want to collect the failure put it in the result but you want to continue with the test the, the failure is not a critical failure sometimes it, it's the case but assertion takes every failure as a critical failure it stops the test when we will be running in the batch okay suppose there are three test cases executing these test cases are executing one after another suppose in the second test case we get the assertion failure so what will happen is that the second test case will stop in between it will report a failure and the third one will start but it will stop in between okay sometimes we don't want it to stop we want it to continue probably the error should be reported with the screenshot and all whatever is the case but we want to continue so over there we use soft asserts in test ng i will talk about them in the frameworks i will not talk about soft assertion right now okay right so i hope you got my point anybody with any questions anyone with any questions okay i'll tell you i'm just coming over to that now in assert class you also have a function known as assert dot um i'm forgetting it is going out of my mind assert dot Hold on. Just one minute. Okay, I'll come over to it. It is actually just going out of my mind. I use it every day, but still, okay, it is just not. I'm not able to recall it. There was this function. Assert true. Yes, sorry. It's very important. I, I'm sorry. Okay. there are two parameters in this i just clearly recollected it there is a condition to suppose i write two greater than one and some error message in this okay look two greater than one this is a condition assert true wants that this condition should evaluate to true if i run this code the test case will pass because 2 greater than 1 is true however if i write 2 greater than 11 then this will evaluate to false okay and you will have this error message out here if i run this this test case will fail in the results you will see the error message being displayed out here okay fine so the thing is you have to be a little careful out here as in when to use this assertion remember we had seen a function is element present you can give that function over here 
that assert true is element present. You can call that function. If the element is present, you'll get true. If the test will pass. If it is not present, maybe you, you can fail the test. So in those scenarios, you can use this. Sometimes what happens is that you reach a position or you reach an area of the application where you should not be reaching and you are very sure that the test has failed. For example, if you are on the website, say yahoo.com and suppose in yahoo.com, this cricket link should not be present on the top but it is present okay this cricket link should not be present on the top but suppose if it is present you you are sure that the test case has failed okay right so in that case you have to deliberately fail the test case sometimes it you come across a situation in the frameworks we will see that situation okay so in that case you can write assert dot fail okay in that case you can write assert dot fail and you can fail the test case directly all right now if i run this code this will fail the test case you can also write assert dot fail with some error message that error message will come up in the report when you run this you will have this error message Okay. Right. So this is how you can use assertion. You can use assert dot fail. You can use assert dot assert true. You can use uh, assert dot assert equals. Right. You can use any one or any any of them. And assertions they help you to do the validations. I have not talked about soft asserts. I will be talking about them. Okay, now sometimes you have to skip a test case. When you are running the test cases, you don't want to run all the test cases. You, you want to skip the test case. Right. So for that, we, we can use something like this. When a test case is running, you can write throw new skip exception you can give the reason over here why you are skipping you can throw a skip exception and when you run this code In the results, you will see it in yellow. That means it is skip, skipping and you will get the message skipping the test out here. Okay. Right. So, this is how you can run the test cases. You can pass or fail them or you can skip them. You can have multiple test annotations as well in a class.
okay right now thing is suppose my first test case search mobile executes all right and in between some failure happens and you fail the test case if i run my first test if i run this java file you will see that search mobile has failed but add to cart and checkout are passing now other two test cases should not execute if the searching for the mobile is failing it's but obvious the other two should not be executed so you have to introduce dependency between the test cases and generally the test cases which are dependent on each other are kept in a single java file that's what my experience tells you can introduce dependency between them in that case okay you can prioritize them i will talk about the that thing krishna in the framework that how do you skip multiple test cases and all we keep the information in the excel file that which which test case to execute and which test case not to execute okay so out here these are the test cases okay and if my first test case is failing i don't want to execute the second and the third one so i need to introduce dependency between them and dependency can be introduced like this you can write over here depends on methods search mobile you have to write over here that this particular this particular test case is dependent on search for mobile test okay similarly you can write for others as well that both these test cases are dependent on search for mobile maybe checkout is dependent on both of them search for mobile as well as add to cart you can put the dependency like this so if this test case fails or even if it skips the other two test cases will be skipped if i run this code you will see that first one is failing so other two are skipping because there is a dependency injection out here okay the dependency of the this test case is there similarly if add to cart fails if this passes this fails then checkout will not execute so we have to keep same test cases in the same java file sorry dependent test cases in the same java file that is important all right now in test ng you have got this test annotation apart from this test annotation there are other annotations as well okay and we will just have a look at them for example you have the annotation at the rate before method okay public void before method or first let us see before test okay hold on and inside it i will print before test like this. and then you can have at the rate after test okay public void inside it i am going to write after test okay 
So when you run this code, out here, you will see that before test is printed here and after test is printed here. In between the test cases are executed. Okay, so before test and after test both are executed before and after executing all the test cases. Okay, right. So, like for example, if you have a browser, you can open the browser in before test and maybe you can execute all the test cases and after test you can close the browser. You can, uh, or you can initialize your reporting part. Okay, we'll talk about it later on. Or you want to connect to a database. You can do all these things in before test. In after test, you can close down the connections and all everything. Okay, right. And uh, similarly, we have got other annotations like at the rate before method public void before method okay and at the rate after method okay right and inside it you can write before method and inside it you can write after method all right anybody with any questions anybody with any questions right so if if you run this code, hold on, before method and after method, I'll just put this dash line. Okay. And when you run this code, you will see that before method and after method are executed, before and after executing each and every test case okay before and after executing each and every test case these are executed so maybe you want to do some things before and after executing every test you can do that and out here in before test And after test, the location of these annotations, they don't matter. There is a pre-decided order in which they execute. Okay. The location of their, like wherever you write it, it doesn't matter. You, maybe I can write it in the end of the file or in the beginning of the file, wherever I want. Okay. And secondly, out here, I hope you got my point, this thing, this thing, right. Now out here, at times what happens if a test case fails, for example, search mobile fails, I will fail this test. Okay. And if I run this code, So you will see that search mobile is failing, other two are skipping. Okay. So out here in the console, you will see before test is executed in the very beginning and after test is executed in the end. But before method and after method are only executed for search mobile, not for the other test cases because 
inherently they are skipped and they should not be executed because those test cases are meant to be skipped but if i suppose deliberately skip this test case and if i run the code i'm skipping the second test add to cart you will see that before and after are executed okay for that so it will be obviously it will be fine and these two are executed for the second test case which was add to cart since checkout was dependent on add to cart checkout was not executed it was skipped for that before method and after method were also not executed okay so the last after method is for the second test case over here not for the third one because third one was dependent so it simply completely got skipped are you getting my point i hope you are getting my point right now sometimes you have to parameterize the test case for example i have a simple file known as login and in this you have the test case login test now i want to execute this test case multiple times with different sets of data okay so what we do is that in test ng we have got we make a two dimensional array like this with multiple rows and column let me draw it over here this is better for me just a minute we make a two dimensional array to save the data it's got multiple rows and multiple columns okay the number of rows are equal to number of times you want to run the test case and number of columns equals to number of parameters you have okay right so number of rows the first row will hold the data for the first run the second row will hold the data for the second run and so on and so forth so number of rows are equal to number of times you want to run the test case maybe you can store the data like this over here i'll keep i want to run my test on mozilla browser with some username with some password okay with some expected result whatever is the case you can keep the data for the second run i want to run it on chrome with some username and some password okay so it's it's completely up to you so we make a two dimensional array and we keep the data inside it now how do we do this right we'll see to it for doing this we have a special annotation known as at the rate data provider okay there are few steps involved over here predefined steps the first step is that you have to make this annotation data provider 
Okay, it returns you a two-dimensional object array known as get. Right, you import it. Right, to import the data provider annotation, and then you make a two-dimensional object array. Why do we use object array in out here? What is object? Object is the super class of all the classes in Java actually. I'll tell you why do we use it. Suppose it has got three rows and three columns. So that means if the, it, the flow goes like this, the first, I hope you know all these things in two dimensional arrays. The first parameter is the rows and the number, second parameter is the column. Right. And you can write over here first row. Okay, you can write data 0 0 is say browser Mozilla then data zero one is some email ID okay data zero two is some expected result maybe you can put some boolean value true look this is the advantage of object array in an object array you can put up any data type i can put string i can put an integer it's up to me i can put a boolean value it's completely up to you right then you can add the second row that is data one zero one 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 two okay and you can put up chrome some other email id some other result that expected result value is false and then you can put up the third row generally we will read this data from the excel file and put it over here right now i am doing it over here because I want to explain you. okay so you can put up some other browser email or result whatever you want okay for the third row you can write two and you simply write return data so the first thing is that you have to make this data provider you have to put the values in a two-dimensional object array the object array can hold integers strings booleans decimals anything Okay, and then it is declared inside the method because you have to put the data inside the object array, right? That is why it is declared inside the method. And this will return the object of the object array, which is data. Okay, and in the test case, you can link your test. You can write over here that the data provider for this test is get data that this is the function this is the second step the first step is make your data provider the second step is link it to the test that means that data provider is get data that means that for this test case the data will be read from this function and the third step is you have to define your parameters Define input parameters for the test. This means that if there are three columns, that means there are three parameters in every row, your test case should have three input parameters like string browser, string email, and boolean expected result. So what will happen is that when test when test ng will run it will first go to this test case it will see that data provider is getting from this get data function data is coming from here so it will jump to this data provider and it will see that fine there are three rows that means i want to run the test case three times so when it runs for the first time it will pass the first parameter in the browser 
second parameter in the email and the third parameter in expected result okay right so when you run this now nothing you don't have to do anything else test ng will take care of it when you run it you will see that total runs are three okay first it executed with this data then with this data then with this data okay right so this is how you can use test ng with parameterization later on we will read this data from an excel file okay we will read this data from the excel file all right so now tomorrow when we meet i will be talking about testng.xml testng is not complete as of now i will talk about extent reports as well and after that we will jump over to build the framework okay i will stop here for today all right and anybody with any questions